It's now been four days since that dockside brawl that was sparked when a pontoon boat refused to let a riverboat dock. We have got to talk about what happened in Montgomery, Alabama over the weekend, okay? It is very ironic that a brawl like this will happen in a place with so much racist history. But black people are sick and tired of you blocking their cars in the parking lot. White, rich, white privilege is the worst. White privilege is bad, but rich, white privilege. We seem to forget that our racism, our white privilege, does have consequences. The reason so many people were so upset about a man hitting a woman with a folding chair in Montgomery, Alabama, is because his doing so violated one of the most enduring and deeply entrenched social norms in American culture and in Western culture as a whole. And that's only white men get to hit white women. I've never in my life seen the whole world rally against white people in support of black people, which goes to show that we can actually come together for issues where minorities are being treated like crap. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I know, I know it's been a minute. <laughs> I was supposed to film a video last week and life just got in the way. I just got really busy and I just was not able to give you guys your full video. And I don't want to just make a video to make a video. Like I want to make sure that I have something to say. I want to make sure that it's going to be produced well. So I was like, you know what, let me just take a break, a little break, gather myself together and then film when I have something to say. And guess what? I've got something to say. <laughs> Montgomery, Alabama, the race wars, or is it? This is a hot mess, you guys. This is a hot mess. And I wasn't going to talk about this originally because I was like, this is kind of a stupid story. It just, it just felt like a story that just got dragged by the media because we all know that the media loves to play race wars. You know what blows my mind about all of this is when I originally watched the video, despite the headlines being solely race-based, I watched the video objectively just to see what was going on. And what I saw was adults, adult people acting like they were on the Jerry Springer show. That's what I saw. I saw a bunch of people fighting, fist fighting on both ends, beating the hell out of each other on both ends, looking crazy. But what the left saw, as you saw from those clips, was white versus black. Slave owners beating slaves, apparently, to some people. I mean, <laughs> the narrative was completely hijacked by the left-leaning media, as it always is, and we were told that this is solely a race-based issue. Period, end of story. It happened in the South, Check. A black guy was getting beat up by white people. Check. We get to play race wars. Check. Sign me up. I mean, that is a liberal way. At the end of the day, we don't know if this was solely based on race or if this was a racist incident. We just don't know. But it took 2.5 seconds for the left-leaning media and the cancel culture mob to jump on the bandwagon and immediately declare that this is a revolution for black people, that this was a racist incident, that this is solely about race, that the people who are fighting that man must have been racist because they're white and they're in the South. Now, let me tell you something. When I used to be on the left, I used to be a zombie like these people, okay? I would have been quick to jump to the same conclusions and say, this must be about race. They must have been fighting him solely because he's black and nothing else. Their hearts and their souls and their minds are racist because they happen to be white and they're having a brawl with black people. So therefore, they must be the villains. End of story. That's where it ends. You don't question it. You don't challenge it because then you are a racist. And it's really sad to see people online, video after video, jumping on the bandwagon, having zero evidence, zero evidence, only assumptions. And in today's day and age, all you need is assumptions. All you need is a white person and they are racist, period, end of story. Doesn't matter what led up to it. Doesn't matter what the incident was really about. All that matters is the skin color of the people who were fighting. And the old liberal leftist me would have jumped on the same bandwagon and would have came to the same conclusions without even thinking twice. But thank the Lord, I was red-pilled and I do not buy into that garbage anymore. And I'm able to now view things objectively, take a step back and actually watch it and see what's going on. And when you take that racial lens off, you actually see the world in a much clearer way. And I'm thankful for that because having that mentality is poisonous to your mind, to your soul, to your spirit. It's just ugly. And it's sad that in today's day and age, you don't need evidence. You don't need facts. You don't need anything. All you need is assumption. That's it. If the person's white, they did it. They're guilty. They're racist. Done. Everybody claps. I'm not clapping. Sorry. I'm an objective thinker. And I just think it's ridiculous that the basis for the racist claims is that the man that was getting beat up in the beginning of the video happened to be black. That's it. 
Now, I'm from originally the Bronx, aka the hood, and I can tell you that people of all colors, races, and creeds get beat up. It happens. And nine times out of 10, it ain't got nothing to do with your skin color. People will fight for any reason. And I just wish that we could be objective thinkers as opposed to just jumping on the leftist mob mentality of cancel culture and immediately say, this must be racist. And of course, now you're gonna have people digging into their past. You know, back in, you know, uh, 2005, you said this tweet. It's like, come on, come on, people. Like, this is just like low hanging fruit, low hanging fruit. And people just jump on it immediately. White people are quick to be the saviors, the white saviors, right? The virtual signaling saviors, condemning themselves, calling themselves white privilege. And it's just ridiculous. It's like, when are we going to grow up and grow out of this mentality? When? Because I'm sick of it. But then I saw this video on TikTok that my sister sent to me. So shout out to Dinah. And when I saw this video, I was like, now nah, I've got to talk about this. <laughs> so let's watch this TikTok video together about the Montgomery, Alabama brawl that happened between, I say adults, but the left-wing media says black and white people. And let's see what this white liberal woman has to say about the brawl. Here we go. There is so much symbolism in this riverboat brawl. It's insane. First of all, the riverboat that was coming to dock uh, was named Harriet Tubman. Second, the folding chair was invented by a black man named Nathan Alexander. And third, did you see the white guy's Crocs? I can't even believe those were busted through that bad. That was insane. But it's kind of symbolic because white people used to feed black babies to alligators and crocodiles. Crocs. This event was a holy spiritual event that will go down in history and the reason why it's so exciting is because i'm seeing so many black folks feeling so much pride and community and it's it's helping them so much heal from a lot of the trauma that they have experienced for generations so this is a holy moment in history it will go down as something sacred <laughs> I wish I could tell you that that entire video was just a parody and that woman wasn't serious and she was literally making a joke and a mockery of what has been happening, but she's serious. She's all the way serious. She is the type of person that we laugh at. We look at and we say, bless her heart. <laughs> and if you're from the South, you know what I mean. She's cray cray. Okay, first of all, to call this violent brawl a holy moment in time, say what now? <laughs> like, like I can't even comprehend the pure ignorance of this person's commentary. And I can't shake the feeling that her entire perspective is coming from a look at me, I'm white and I'm saying this, I'm one of the good guys, I'm virtual signaling, give me a thumbs up, please don't cancel me. Like that's what I get from that type of video. I get somebody who's so afraid to speak truth that she has to bash herself and in essence make a mockery of herself in order to get brownie points from what she feels are oppressed people. Now here's the thing, why do white liberals feel that downgrading people of color, specifically black people, into victims is somehow empowering. Can somebody please explain that to me? Because I'm really confused. The fact that this woman would take the initiative to say that for black people, this is a holy moment. And for black people, they finally feel heard and validated. And when you look at the incident that she's speaking of, it's a violent incident. It's people punching each other in the face, kicking each other in the stomach, a man bashing a chair on a woman who literally is on the ground already <laughs> defenseless. And you have people taking pictures of that chair like it's a holy moment. And she's telling black people, this is your moment. This is your aha moment. This is your revolution. This is the moment that's going to uplift you. Violence this is all you got. I'm sorry, but I just wholeheartedly reject that. And I want to give black individuals more credit <laughs> than that, than to say that the lowest common denominator, which is violence, is the only way that black people can feel validated in this country or feel empowered. I don't know who she's speaking to, but in my opinion, that is offensive to the highest degree to say that the bar is so low for black people that a violent incident like this is the only way that they can feel empowered because they got to punch a white person in the face. Like that is just so so 
disgusting to me. You know what should be empowering? Getting an education, getting a degree, having a successful career, making six figures, being a public speaker, being someone that people can look up to. There are so many black individuals who have made it in this country who are the American dream. And this white virtual signaling woman wants all the black people to know that your empowerment isn't achieving greatness. It's watching a brawl happen and watching white people get the poop kicked out of them because that's empowerment. No, that is lunacy. But that is what the left offers you. That's it right there in a nutshell, in a nutshell. Critical thinking goes out the window because you can't be a critical thinker and be a liberal. You just can't. I tried it. You can't do it. You must co-sign, co-sign, co-sign. And if you're white, <laughs> you better hate yourself. And you know what's even sadder? You know what's even sadder about this ridiculous video is going through this woman's comments. I'm gonna show you some of the comments from this video and you will see <laughs> a lot of people giving her praise, a lot of black individuals saying, thank you so much. A lot of white people saying, preach. I mean, is the bar this low? Is the bar really this low? I, I just, Lord, it can't be this low. It just can't be. Look at these comments. First one, I love the way she broke this down. Second comment, I also heard someone say that the area was also where they had an auction block on that waterfront. Very spiritual indeed. Now tell me, what the heck does that have to do with this brawl? Please tell me, please, please tell me. The reach. This is exactly what I was taught and I pass this on to my kids. Oh Jesus. I did the same with my kids. Thanks sister, appreciate what you're doing. Greetings from the Netherlands. <laughs> Thank you for not only understanding, but breaking it down the way that you did. I don't know about healing, but it was beautiful and cathartic. I'm Portuguese and I'm loving this. Great. So we're reaching other countries with this nonsense. Wonderful. The folding chair was the best part. Oh, you mean the man bashing a chair over a woman's head was the best part? Again, bar very low. Absolutely waited for the day like this, proving a major point at this time in our lives. So you waited for a brawl to happen to make a point? Really? Wow. Again, guys, I'm going to leave you with this. Please be critical thinkers. That's all I ask for. Now, I'm not saying that this incident or the people involved in the incident were innocent because they were white or black. I don't know if race was an underlying issue for any of these people. But what I do know is that in our society, particularly in this country, we are always so quick to run with the race narrative as long as it fits all of the check marks that we're trying to mark off. And this incident is the perfect example because like I said, less than 24 hours when this video first surfaced on the web, every single head line read white people versus black people. White people attack black man. Racism head to head. I mean, it literally was the race Olympics on every single social media platform, every single media platform on TV. And it's just sad to me because we wonder why we're so divided as a country. It's because we take opportunities like this and we use it as a way to enforce our own racial biases, our own anger, our frustration. We use moments like this as opportunities to push an agenda. And all I'm saying to you, my loyal viewers, is to please critically think. Ask yourself, what lens do you have in your eyes? What lens? Because if you're wearing a racial lens, 24 seven, seven days a week, you are going to see race in everything, even when it does not exist. And again, I'm not saying if it did exist in this case or didn't exist, what I'm saying is people were quick to jump to a conclusion before they had any facts because that is the way of social media. That is the way of 2023. That is the way of cancel culture. Let me ask you this. What would happen if that video was opposite, right? And it was a white guy fighting with three or four black men and they were beating him up. Would the narrative still be the same? Would it? If the answer is no, then we have to ask ourselves, what are we doing here? And is it really about justice and race or is it really about trying to make a bigger point and using this situation as a catalyst to jump on a bandwagon because it feels good. It feels good. Please critically think. That's all I'm saying. Don't just drink the Kool-Aid because CNN and the rest of them, they want you spinning. They want your head spinning. They want to control your mind. They want to control the narrative. They want to control how you see the world. They want to control what lens you put in your eyes every single day. Don't fall for it. That's all that I got for you guys today. Again, I'm so sorry for being MIA for almost two weeks. My bad. But I promise to be more active and to just keep pumping out videos for you guys as long as you guys want to keep seeing it and want to keep seeing me. If you enjoy my content, please do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit my notification bell so you know when I post a brand new video. Also available on TikTok and on Instagram under Curly Boy Chuck. Definitely send me some DMs if you guys want me to react to any videos. Just make sure to put in the title of your message, reaction video request, and I definitely will take a look at it. If you guys want to donate to my channel, I will have a link to my PayPal and to my Cash App where you guys can directly send me some funds, and I definitely will use the funds to continue to grow this channel. Until next time.
Peace.